Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a massive storm coming with a huge trough injection that'll bring multiple rounds of severe weather and heavy snow next week. Welcome back everyone, how's it going? We got a lot to talk about this morning. So let's kind of delve into the details and look at the overall surface map for today on your Friday, the 11th. And which we can see we've got blizzard warnings happening right now. They're about to expire in uh, North Dakota, but we got some cold Arctic air well to the north. It's 21 degrees when I'm recording this video at 10 o'clock in the morning up in uh, Minneapolis. But it's got some rain down to the south of Chicago. And we're going to be watching this uh, cold front take a beeline southward and it will modify over time because it's plenty of warm air today but that's going to be changing in a big way for tomorrow so let's take a look at the overall nam on our snow that's going to be coming up for portions of the northeast and this snow event really just never came to fruition i mean it never these systems never really kind of phased together and it's going to be way too progressive to amount to really anything so but yeah, there are going to be some snow showers breaking out by the time we get into Saturday night into portions of uh, Tennessee here as well as Kentucky. That'll feed into portions of really in the higher elevations of Virginia and West Virginia going into uh, Delaware. And this will eventually get into portions of South Jersey. We're not talking about heavy snow here. We're just literally light to moderate, light, really light snow. All these areas are going to be picking up essentially maybe a trace of snow up to a, up to three inches as this continues to burst across and bringing that snow, br bringing it further inland, going into a uh, Jersey, places maybe like Philly, uh, New York City, into portions of Boston, Rhode Island here along the Cape here. But like I mentioned, this system's well offshore. It's not gonna be able to time to have phase together. But I wanted to really highlight this feature because it never really came, came together uh, like some of the models were kind of hinting at and we were watching this system and we talked about it was very tricky yesterday but yeah it just kind of just never came to fruition right i mean because if you look at the overall setup we've got some cold air i mean the cold air continues to push and there's that you know by seven o'clock in the morning on sunday we've got freezing temperatures well to the south widespread freezing temperatures for much of texas and much of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and it's just, there's your Arctic air well to the north. We've got almost 20 below zero in portions of uh, Minnesota. So there's plenty of Arctic air to contend with. But yeah, I mean, but by the time that that system really gets its get, gets going, the, the cold air comes in behind it and, this, and the precipitation is pretty much already gone. And so as we look at the latest NAM, this is kind of gives you a really true depiction of where the snowfall is going to be. And I think this is really going to be highlighting anywhere from, say, a trace and this this feature up to about three inches. So, yeah, I mean, you could be picking up a dusting. If you're lucky, you're going to get three inches out of this system, but really not amounting uh, to much. But, yeah, as as we continue the view... Let's take a look at next week because we got a lot to talk about next week because it looks really active. We talked about it's going to be looking really interesting. Now the pieces of the puzzle are really coming together that we could be looking at a multi-day uh, severe weather event as this really starts to ramp up. So yeah, that cold front comes in Sunday, but it's going to quickly mod modify as the winds turn around from the southwest. And so by Monday afternoon, <laughs> you're back to where you are today. I mean, you're talking 70s back into Texas and uh, portions of Louisiana with that high pressure going to be dominating. And this will be just lifting off further off into the north as we go through the week. But our main attention is going to be turned off to the Pacific Northwest as we've got this diving feature coming on off of Alaska here. That's going to be entering the Pacific Northwest. There's some colder air to it as well, but it's going to be developing a massive trough, trough that's going to be setting the stage for our severe weather uh, event starting on the day on Wednesday. But before that, we have to highlight the PNA, and this is the reason why we're going to have a pattern flip because. Uh, the Pacific North American uh, goes negative and actually remains negative for the next week or two. So we're going to be looking at these troughs kind of lining up and, and, and coming in off the Pacific Northwest and diving southward as the ridge will start building eastward. And that's puts you, in, puts you in the warm sector with the trough at west. That's typically indicative 
of some severe weather that's going to be coming to fruition as we get into the middle of uh, next week. So as we look underneath the hood and look at some of these uh, vorticities, we can definitely see that system coming in in portions of Washington and uh, Oregon here in northern parts of California. That's going to be our developing system, our trough. And underneath that, you are going to have some instability. There's really not any like true Arctic air uh, next week as the jet stream is going to be lifting well to the north. But underneath that cold core, it's going to bring some colder air. But it's also going to bring some showers back in the picture in places like Seattle, going into Portland, and into the higher elevations. You are going to be getting some snow again. But once this moves uh, southward on on later in the day on Tuesday, that ends, right? It's just maybe a, a one day hit for you guys as this vorticity will push southward. And as it does, you're going to be drying out of the backside. But that's going to be intensifying this low level uh, trough and as it gets into the four corners regions on the day on Wednesday, that's when it's really gonna start get, really getting its act together and pulling in some of this uh, warm water, waters here off, off the ocean here. And when it's able to do that and tap into some of that Southwest winds, that's when it's gonna be able to set the stage for some severe weather as we get into Wednesday night. But before that, to the North, We've got that low pressure system. It's going to be able to ring some snow showers out into places like Arizona, back into places like Montana, where it has been really dry. So you can definitely see we're seeing a pattern shift that will shift down into Wyoming. And this will eventually set up over the Rockies, get into places like Denver, where they've been well below average this year for snowfall. So we are going to be looking at some snow coming back for them. So as this continues to move across into the east and as we get into Wednesday night, I think that's when things really start to get act active with this low level moisture setting up off the south of Texas here with that trough really starting to dig in and out ahead of it, there's the warm sector. So you can see the ridge really starting to build here. These temperatures will start to elevate and really start bringing in the dew points as well. The dew points come back in the 60s and a lot of these areas, and once it's able to tap into some of that uh, low level moisture, that's gonna set the stage for our severe weather. And just to the north of that, that's your deformation zone. That's gonna be the Northwest zone here. Underneath that low pressure system, that's where some of the heavier snow will be flying into Colorado. That'll get into portions of New Mexico, as well as the Texas Panhandle, Going, going into uh, Wednesday night, but you can see where the warm sector is. You got the trough coming in off the west. As this moves across, it's got some, some cold air associated with it. There's your Arctic air well to the north, and there's your warm sector. All of Texas into Kansas and to, and to uh, you know, Oklahoma and to Missouri and to Arkansas, all these places in the southeast and the Ohio Valley and to the northeast, now you're warm again. And so as these two systems kind of interact with these temperature gradients, yeah, that's going to bring your clash in, temp clash in temperatures, but it's also going to have that instability set setting up where that's going to be bringing that severe weather. And there's your dew point. So you got a dry line that's going to be getting active by the time we get into Wednesday night into portions of West Texas, and that should fire supercell thunderstorms. And out ahead of it, you got that low level moisture with uh, with dew points well into the 60s uh, for this time of year, which is really kind of unusual for February, right? We actually kind of seen this type setup back in December when we had these these severe weather breaks with these troughs coming in and traversing across from west to east. And this is kind of a similar setup, unfortunately, setting setting up as we get deeper into the middle of uh, next week. And so as we do that, and when we look at some of the 500 millibar winds, you can see this kind of this bowling bar, ball type trough is gonna be digging in off the west. And once it pulls in some of that moisture off the ocean here, it's gonna create that lift and with that lift, that's going to be creating showers and thunderstorms. And these are going to be rotating potentially thunderstorms as well. Because if you look at the 850s, it's got a lot of vertical shear setting up over places like North Texas, getting into Oklahoma, into Arkansas, back into Louisiana, and back into Central Texas as well. And that's even this far out. That's why the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted 
a slight risk for severe weather, you know, even five, six days from now. So that's why the, the global models are really all coming together, even this far out and saying, hey, this is coming to fruition. And we've already got enough confidence, even at this far out, this stage, to put a slight risk for severe weather. And that's going to be in places you know, down into College Station, going back into Waco, back into Weatherford, all of North Texas, into East Texas, into Tyler, into Shreveport, heading into Hot Springs, all the way up to Fayetteville, back into uh, Ardmore, Ar you know, Ardmore, Oklahoma. So all this area will be under the gun for your severe weather as we get into that Wednesday night. And I think the overnight time frame into a Thursday morning, but this will just continue off to the east. So it doesn't really end there. It just really kind of amplifies more. So now as this pushes east, now we're going to be setting the stage a little bit further east and we're talking places it in more more into Louisiana, get it into Mississippi, get it into places into uh, Alabama with that lift. But like I mentioned, to the north of that, you're going to have your snow. So as we get into that Wednesday Wednesday night and the overnight Thursday morning time frame, we've got a lot of snow breaking out in the places of Wyoming and to uh, Colorado. This is on the northwest side of the system. Underneath of that, you've got that lift and these darker greens has been bone dry in a lot of these areas in Oklahoma and to Texas. So this these are welcome rains, but unfortunately, it's going to come in the form of severe weather on, on coming up on a, a Wednesday night going into the overnight hours. And then back, you know, like I mentioned, to the northwest side of this, we're going to be having some heavier snow breaking out, not only in the Texas panhandle, but back in Iowa, getting into portions of Wisconsin as we get into that Wednesday time frame. And just as this just really amplifies as this low level jet amplifies underneath, this snow will amplify to the northwest of it. Now we're getting those darker blues with those heavier snows and typically right here right on the northwest flow of this that's where you can be setting these tight isobars these really tight uh, gradients here with those heavier snows dumping you know one two inches per hour snowfall rates is definitely not out of the question as this will continue to really amplify and push off uh, to the east and as it does that the storm prediction center even yes this is next thursday right this is a long ways out but they still feel confidence at this point all the global models are all really coming together even this far out and saying hey this severe threat is the real deal and we're going to need to warn people well in advance so i'm giving you guys plenty of advance warning this is not really, we're talking, you know, next Wednesday and Thursday. This is Friday, guys. <laughs> so, so yeah, by Thursday, we could be looking at some severe weather going into uh, Monroe, getting pretty much all of Mississippi, even including the portions getting, you know, reaching towards uh, the Birmingham, Alabama area, getting into Nashville, going up to, uh, you know, Western Kentucky, Western Kentucky here, portions of Missouri, pretty much all of Arkansas is going to be under the gun for that severe weather as this would just continue uh, pushing off to the east. And as it does so, it's just kind of really too far out by Friday. Of course, you're talking seven days if any of this could be severe at that time frame. But this will just continue to push across. And this looks to be a very active week next week. So definitely, if you live in these zones, may, be weather aware as you come into the to come into that time frame on that Wednesday and Thursday time frame. You've got plenty of time to plan ahead and to know, you know, kind of know what to expect and have your NOAA weather radios handy for this particular setup and get your cars in the garage as well and to make plans accordingly and have your safe zone in place. So, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. I will definitely keep updated and fine tune this system as it gets closer. Uh, enjoy your enjoy the rest of your Friday. I appreciate you watching. Don't uh, catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.